Oh, I know that you're all here for that one. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with Kali Flame of Samsara season 2 episode 1. Y'all, to be quite honest, I'm kind of scared of what to expect because we actually died in the last episode. And yet I heard so many comments that we're gonna be resurrected or something. So first off, thanks for the spoilers. <laughs> no, come on, I love every single one of you, but like... It's very difficult for me to actually wrap my head around how they're gonna perform some kind of a, a ritual that would make us wake up from the dead, first of all. Second of all, that would be so rude because they let the Rati be dead. <laughs> so considering the fact we're the main character, we're allowed to be resurrected and she and our brother aren't. Like, to be quite honest, I would hate them. <laughs> to be quite honest, y'all, maybe it's just me, but I think the right that I have, everyone should have that right, okay? So if I have the right to be resurrected, so does everyone else around me. Because I'm not more worthy than you are, and you aren't more worthy than I am. We both are on the same scale. We both have the same rights. And I hate to see when it's not really executed like that in real life, but I will hold on to that. If we're gonna be brought back from the dead, y'all, I'm gonna be so pissed. <laughs> New life starts after death. The wheel of life has started turning. Yeah, we're not the Messiah, are we? Oh my god. We're in purgatory, y'all. Where is this? Hold up. I don't remember the name. I'm so sorry for the Kali Call of Darkness fans. Like, uh, That was one of my favorite episode stories, but still... Isn't that where Ratan is at home? Like, where all the shades were that were trying to feed on Amala in Kali Call of Darkness? Episode 1, the irreversibility of being. Warning. Okay. Nice, thank you. Shock me. Shock me. Ooh, let's go. <laughs> Meanwhile in Tamas Vitala. Yes, a profound silence reigned in the hall. All the servants had been dismissed and there was nothing that could distract the avatar of order from his contemplations. What is this man contemplating? We still died. So happy. Y'all, I feel like I need to just dump the shit on Ratan, even though he's one of my favorite ca characters. I, I just think considering the fact that he is a deity, he has the power to do something and he just allows everyone to go through so much trauma, through so much pain and suffering. And I hate that. Like, in my eyes, if I have the power to make a difference, I should make a difference and not let people struggle all the time. Because sooner or later, people don't have the strength to fight anymore. And struggling will end up in their suicide mission, okay? Because they're like, I can't deal with this anymore, so I'm just gonna kill myself real quick. Like, a lot of people aren't that psychologically strong, and they kill themselves. So many people have done that, and I think if you have the power to make a change, you should make a change. And not watch the people that you love suffer just in order to learn a lesson that the deity is giving you. Like, I hate that. If you have the power to make a change, make a change, dot... Rita Shiva was lying against the silk cushion scattered on the sofa, a hand on his temple deep in thought. What? You feel in my presence? A premonition of imminent disaster had forced him to return to his abode. <laughs> he was waiting for her. Mm, yeah, me. Rita Shiva was concentrating instantly on his own sensations, trying to catch the exact moment when Davy's soul was going to cross the threshold of this world. Tamas Vitala, the realm of Shiva's avatar, a have for crippled lo a heaven for crippled lost souls and boots right boots that was the name yeah boots are the result are the restless souls of those who were brutally murdered or took their own life aren't also the people there in tamas vitala that actually have a pure soul and that's why they end up in tamas vitala because there's like this one side where Poor unfortunate souls land because they have a pure soul and technically they died even though they didn't deserve it. And they end kind of like on the good side of Tamas Vitala and then there's like this dark city that we saw in Kali Call of Darkness where everything is dark 
and sad. And there are only the bad people, as in the people that deserve to die, you know? Those who died an unfair death, martyrs and sinners were sent there to reap the fruits of their karma and get a chance to redeem themselves in the next life by returning to samsara to be reborn. The deity straightened himself up, clasping his hands together. This is taking exceedingly too long, even for this place. <laughs> He's like, bitch, you're taking way too long. Like, no need to be that dramatic. Just come here. The timeless wasteland. That's what they also called it. Only a few hours in the moral world could last entire years in Tamas Vitala. Even if a soul doesn't step into Marian, I should still immediately sense its echo as they shatter mortal shell. How come I don't feel anything? What? Uh... Hold up. He said when we lose our mortal shell. But what if we don't lose it? What if we're like in a state in between? As in a state between life and death. And that's why we're not ending up in Tamas Vitella. He stood up and closed his eyes. The space around him gradually began to fade and expand to then gather back together. Let's see. <laughs> They're all trying to resurrect me and that's why we're not ending up there. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so sorry. I'm really trying to contain myself, but I can't. Like, this is all karma. All of those little bitches end up... Oh, they all ended up where they deserved. In hell. Burning at the stake. Yes. A poor my, my poor soulmate. A poor Ram. Ram Dubai had rushed out of the temple without paying any attention to the pools of blood under his bare feet, nor to the shouts echoing around him. Like, those bitches can die. Like, they can leave. They be blaming us when they're the biggest bitches of them all. Like, they're the biggest waste of space. Now, I love to be dramatic. You all know me by now. Like, the real ones that have been following me since day one, you all know. I'm brutally honest, but y'all... I would never say something like that to someone's face because I think that's way too mean. And like I said, I respect life itself. So I wouldn't wish anyone any harm. But I already said that in the last episode of uh, Heaven's Secret Requiem. Like, I don't wish anyone harm. But if you are actually willing to go this far, I said that in the episode where they burned down the temple. I think it was in episode 4 of season 1. If you are willing to go to those lengths in order to get what you want, if you're willing to burn people's house, if you're willing to burn people, as in older people, little children, babies, and burn something to the ground that actually has monumental value, something that actually has real meaning to a lot of people, something that is sacred for a lot of people, you deserve the same punishment. Like I said, they were willing to go to such extremes just in order to like quench their stupidity because they thought that we're the reason that all of these horrible things are happening to them, that they were willing to do whatever it took to kill us. So this is the punishment they deserve, them all dying. His eyes were wide open and frozen in fear. He knew what he was going to see. Me dead. <laughs> This is so sad. He felt it as it happened. <gasps> oh, right, because we were connected. And I did kind of make the analysis that when the goddess Kali talked through Sara, that perhaps he also heard it. And he kind of said it, as in he admitted that he heard it when Sara was being possessed by Kali. Because he has like the supernatural connection to Kali. So he, considering the fact that our lives were tied together because he wanted to protect us. So I think that was kind of Kali punishing him by letting him experience the pain and suffering of those headaches and everything that revolves around the fact that we should have died back then at the temple. And Ram didn't want us to die. So he kind of exchanged our lives for Rati, he kind of got the karma that the goddess said, you are gonna share her fate, as in you're gonna feel everything. His feet carried him to where he needed to be. Soon he found himself beside her. I feel so bad for him. My soulmate. Where are we? Oh god. 
his heart filled with a leaden weight. He stared at her body in horror, standing a few feet away from it, ignoring the frightened looks of the others, those around her. Ram didn't dare to reach down and touch her. Could he allow himself to do so, knowing that he was partially responsible for what happened, as he had not prevented the goddess from carrying out her will? I mean, didn't he always tell us that he couldn't do anything about it? No. You know what? I think it was more Ratan. I think this is more like Ratan's kind of nature. Because also in Kali Call of Darkness, which is something I hated him for, is where he was like, listen to her call, listen to what she has to say. Like, she's a goddess, she knows what to do. Like, listen to her, pray to her, listen to her every word, and you will... I don't know, you will succeed in life or whatever. And this is what happened. Like, he wanted to protect us at all costs. And Ratan was like, it's not going to change anything because our death is inevitable. So, like, knowing that something is going to happen is scary enough. But actually feeling the impact of the person that you love. As in feeling the impact of the sword, like, slashing through the body of the woman you're in love with. And actually seeing her die, as in bleeding in front of you, that's another thing. Like, it's always more painful to actually live it. Like, to be actually in the moment and seeing the person you love fade away in front of your eyes. That's a whole nother thing. Because when it still hasn't happened yet, you still have, like, this hope that it could be averted somehow. But when it's done, it's done. Like, you can't go back in time. But his eyes betrayed it all. All the pain, the regret, and the self-loathing because of his own helplessness. No. Amore mio. <laughs> Ram. <laughs> Ram, it's not your fault. Ratan tried to feel her energy as if he were looking for a pulse. He actually showed up here. Devi stood. Oh, really? Isn't that what you wanted? Sorry, like, uh, like I said, y'all. If you have the power, do something. I hate that. The vision suddenly faded away as the familiar outline of the hall came back into focus. Rising from his seat abruptly, Rita Shiva quickly descended the stone steps and headed for the floor. Look at this, y'all, I can't. Mahadeva walked slowly down the street among the gloomy glass-like houses and wondered about Sharma's fate. In a way, it bothered him. Devi, despite her slightly impulsive nature, seemed like a sensible and generally pleasant woman to him. It's a pity that she was given such a burden. Ratan treats you kindly. <laughs> Ratan. <laughs> Ratan. <laughs> like I said, I have a soft spot for Ratan. The souls wandering around aimlessly raised their heads and respectfully parted, making way for Rita Shiva. Did she get another loka? Lokas in Hinduism are multiple dimensions. Ooh. I should contact the other deities. Ratan stopped where he was, closed his eyes and mentally called out to all the other deities in the world. The answer didn't take long. The quiet, muffled and distant voices of the rulers of other dimensions filled his mind, weaving together into a tangle of fragmented words. Svarga, Narak, No, Bu, Loka, not here. Rita Shiva's eyes opened again. Even through that disharmonious chorus of voices, one thing was clear. She's nowhere to be found. I was whacked off existence, y'all. <laughs> it's been nice knowing ya. <laughs> her life has ended, yet her soul has remained on earth or passed on to another place. Which can only mean one of two things. Either Devi's soul has already reached Moksha, which would be rather unusual, or... Moksha is liberation from the cycle of rebirth in Hinduism. Oh, so that would mean that we don't get the chance to be re reborn. Okay. Ratan stopped abruptly, thinking, One more time, quickly. He swept his hand through the air, smoothly erasing the space. In the gap that was created, Rita Shiva saw Ram Dubai. David was still alive at that time. Oh, is he kind of trying to figure out what happened, maybe? The Brahim was holding his head, tangling his fingers in his hair. Y'all, he's so desperate. He's so frustrated with the entire situation. The frustration that he has because he just lost the woman he loves. The frustration and the anger that he has towards himself because he couldn't do anything to prevent this from happening. And the heartache is making everything a lot more difficult and painful for him. 
Like imagine your hands being tied and you literally have to watch the person that you're absolutely in love with, like the person that you want to have by your side forever, <laughs> die in front of you. And you know that you kind of have the capabilities to save him or her, yet your hands are literally tied. You can't do anything but allow it to happen. The pain. His face suddenly contorted into an agonizing grimace. Oh, honey. Rita Shiva felt his emotions. Ram was aware of what was happening right at that moment. And yet, besides the terrible headache, it was guilt that was tearing him apart. He wasn't there. He let it happen. He allowed what was foretold to come true. <gasps> Hold up! Wait. Is that why he's mad at himself? He... Wait. He let it happen. It's written here in words, in capital letters, okay? I mean, not the, uh, literally in capital letters, but you're all reading what I'm reading, right? He let it happen. So technically, he could have prevented it again, but he allowed us to be killed. He allowed that man to drive the knife through us, as in... The way this is being portrayed, Ram could have saved us from that man. He could have stopped this man's sword to pierce through our body, but he allowed the goddess wish to be fulfilled. She said we need to die. So he allowed her wish to be fulfilled, but he could have done something to save us. All he had left to do was accept the consequences. <laughs> Now, am I mad at Ram for letting us die or not? To be quite honest, y'all, at this point, even though we are together and everything, I don't think I can blame him here because technically the goddess made it loud and clear. Even if he would have protected us tonight, she would have tried to gather another event for us to be killed. She wanted us to die. So she wouldn't have cared how much we're trying to be alive, she wouldn't have cared how much we want to live. She would have always found a way to come up with a specific event that would cause or lead up to the point where we would be losing our lives. So I can't be mad at him for allowing us to be killed because technically this was like a devil circle. This is literally just life repeating itself, causing the same moment to happen again and again and again because the goddess wanted us to die so she would have found another way to lead to up to this point where we would be pierced with a sword she wanted us to die so nothing that ram would have done this time would have helped us it would have just prolonged or death because we were still meant to die he saved us once Back then, in episode 4 of season 1. This time he couldn't. Resting his knees on the cold floor of the ritual hall, he felt his own powerlessness. If she was so dear to him, could he rebel against fate? Enough. He swept his hand again, tightening the gap, a slight smile curled on his lips. So what are your plans for her, Madhavikali? This man literally having so much fate. Y'all, I think I said it so many times what I feel about uh, religion and everything. But I'm so intrigued to know what all of your religions are or if you even have a religion yourself. Like, even though I feel like a lot of people are scared to actually say their opinion. Y'all, please do. Like, we're all human beings, and I'm doing it so many times. Like, I'm doing so many analyzes, and I'm trying to explain myself the best I can. I love every single one of you, and every single one of you is different. The only thing that unites every single one of us is the fact that we're all pure-hearted. But every single one of us is different. We're all from different places. We are all f grew up differently because of different lifestyles or because our parents taught us different things. We all grew up with a different heritage. We all grew up in different life circumstances. 
we all have something different to add here to this community that I'm trying to build up here. Like you're all different and it's beautiful that you are. Like we all can be different and we all should be different because difference is what makes us stick out in the crowd. Please remain different. Please, you don't need to do anything like you don't need to always uh, agree with everything I say. Like I appreciate when people give me their opinion. Like please do. Calcutta, the Temple Square. A little while earlier. Again, before we die. Oh God, who's laughing in the corner? Davia, Davi. The inner darkness that had given her the strength to fight began to fade away, leaving behind only a feeling of emptiness and utter exhaustion. The golden kanda that once belonged to Kaira slipped out of Devi's hand and fell to the ground with a clang. The fight was over. Everything was shrouded in darkness. Screams. The smoke from the fire was filling the square. Or are we gonna see what's happening to her? The governor general's men had started to push back harder, forcing some of the rioters to retreat. Lord de Clare kept holding the young woman in his arms as she went through the agony of death. Somewhere nearby, Amrit growled viciously, chasing enemies away from his vulnerable mistress. I'm sorry, Amrit, he deserves a treat. <laughs> you better treat Amrit, right? The pain in her stomach throbbed, spreading through her veins like a searing flow of lava, making her scream. Lord de Clare tried his best to comfort her. Dove, we'll get you out of here. You'll get help. Just hold on. Son, I'm dying, bitch. <laughs> so sorry. Like, I'm sorry. You see that we have this huge asshole in our stomach, right? We're not gonna survive. This pain can't be stopped. And what has happened can't be changed. Fate has caught up to me. Which is something that actually hurts me. Like, I feel so bad for her. Like, imagine that you literally cannot outrun death. Like, death following you around. Like, I don't know what... Like, we all die at some point, and to be quite honest, I'm scared to die. Like, I want to live as long as possible. Like, please make me a vampire. I never want to die, if possible. But to actually know the time that you will die, that's scary as fuck. And literally knowing that no matter how you try to change the moments in your life, hoping that they would make the final cut for you not to die at that time at that place is so frustrating and it's so sad everything in front of her eyes had grown cloudly and christian's face was nothing but a blurry dot this is how it feels to die a large tear rolled down davy's cheek leaving behind a wet trail on her skin covered in soot davy's thoughts turned to ram the one she desperately wished to see in the last moments of her life did you hear the mother laughing do you know what I'm going through right now? Maybe you knew everything and you didn't have the strength to come out and see my death with your own eyes. Dying would be a little easier if you were here holding my hand right now. I feel so bad for her. Y'all, I'm crying for me. I'm crying for my character. Like, she did not deserve all of this bullshit, to be quite honest. Like, what is this? Years flashed before her eyes, starting from her childhood. Davy suddenly thought back to the entirety of her short existence. Your priority, legacy. She felt sorry she had missed out so many things. Nothing will be left of me. My family line will be interrupted. Everything my parents spent years building came all to nothing. How much more could I have done? Christian raised his hand, waving to his man. His voice thundered. Search all the nearest allies and corners. Don't let anyone get away. To be quite honest, let's go, Christian declare. He's like, you all bitches, you are all little motherfucking bitches. Let me, <laughs> let me jump you. <laughs> let me burn you at the stake. Like, you're not getting away from me. Like, I know how to throw spears. Doran kept Saraswati close to him so that no one would dare to attack her. After all, she had been declared a traitor just like Devi. Kamal and Doran had quietly joined a squad of British soldiers clearing the area. The other members of the Dozen were somewhere safe. Devi was greedily gasping for air, but breathing was getting harder by the second. Then she felt a movement on her right side and a soothing wet touch. Amrit had come up to her and was nuzzling her shoulder. Amrit! Oh, and he was doing whatever it took to save us. He is no. <laughs> you better treat Amrit right, y'all. I'm sorry, my darling. I hope Arad will take good care of you in my place. 
<laughs> um, but it was a good one. She could hear the echo of familiar voices all around her, but couldn't quite make out what they were saying. All sounds were muffled except the dark mother's laughter as if she was underwater. The laughter ringing in her ears gradually grew quieter until it completely faded away. A purple flash of lightning appeared in the sky accompanied by a deafening roll of thunder. Devi's heart shuddered one last time. Oh my god, what is this? As the world ceased to exist for her, so the time. How long had it been? A minute? An hour? A year? There was nothing that cold darkness. Oh, the emptiness was absolute. Was that the way to Tamas Vitala or was something else waiting for her? Where am I? Where am I supposed to go? I don't see anything. I don't understand anything. What the hell? She raised her head, and her eyes met a black sky scattered with myriads of bright stars. The clusters painted an incredible picture. Davy had never seen anything like it before. Her appearance had also changed. What? Serenity? <gasps> mm. You know what? We're calm. To be quite honest, this actually looks so cute. I want this. Look at this. Look at that hair. She looked around. A majestic mountain range spread out on all sides and soft white snow shimmered beneath her bare feet. Devi stopped in place. Where even are we? Isn't snow supposed to feel cold? She clenched her hands into fists but felt nothing. Touching her own skin was like touching air. I don't feel anything. Only emptiness. In an instant, everything had become insignificant to her. I'm dead. But even that realization didn't bring any bitterness. Should I stand here for all eternity or should I try to go somewhere? <laughs> to be quite honest, I love her. I love her sass. She's like, well, I'm dead now. What now? <laughs> Like, am I supposed to stand here for all eternity? What am I supposed to do? Am I just supposed to stand here like a statue? Like, nice little goddess, you got what you wanted. I'm fucking dead. Like, what for? Is there any point in going on? There's always a point, bitch. I have to fight for as long as I can. I always have a look anyway. She turned around and saw a narrow snow-covered path leading up the mountainside. I'll go toward that path. I'll <laughs> run. No, you know what? We've been running our entire lives. We'll walk. Something is wrong. It's as if the path is not getting closer. I don't know. Run then? I don't understand. A stop then. That means we actually can leave the place we're in right now. She took a step after the other, but none of them brought her any closer to where she wanted to go. She tried to run, but kept remaining in the same place. I can't even move. Will I have to stay here? Suddenly an anonymous whisper shook the silence. It sounded both in her head and all around her at the same time, filling all that endless space. I will guide you. Huh? That voice made her flinch. It made her feel something. Recognize your purpose. It's a woman's voice. I've heard it before. Deep inside her, there was an understanding of who it belonged to, but those memories eluded her every time she got closer to them. It didn't stop. It just got bigger and louder, pressing from inside and outside her. You only have one way to go. The stars began to flicker and fade away, one by one, like candles caught in a gust of wind. The world was gradually sinking into impenetrable darkness. Follow my call. To where, ma'am? The sound of the fight had already died down. The combined forces of some families, families of the Dozen and the governor's men had put an end to the unrest. Kamal, Doran, Arad, and Saraswati stood around the clan Devi. Amrit was sitting nearby. He felt everything too. You may not have heard it or seen it properly. Let me check on myself. Kamal took a half step forward, crouched down, and touched her neck with two fingers, the place where one would normally feel a pulse. Then he took a wrist. I'm dead, bitch. Why aren't you saying anything? Tell me the Lord is wrong. He's wrong, isn't he? 
Kamal looked at Sara over his shoulder. The realization had been like a punch in his guts, knocking all the air out of his lungs. The man's eyes gleamed, his answer clear without a word. Oh, <laughs> Sara couldn't hold back her sobs and covered her face with her hands. Doran put his arm around her shoulders, trying to help her keep the pain at bay. Some time passed and everyone poured out their emotions the best they knew how. They had to live through them. Oh, Ra- <laughs> he mad. He about to go on massacre. And to be quite honest, like I said, give my boy Amri the treat. Someone is coming. Oh, Arad also not having it because he was like, we're the best mistress ever. Everyone turned around. There was a figure approaching in the distance. Arad was about to place his hand on the hilt of his kanda when he realized that it was just Ram Dubai. He joined the others and finally saw what he had come for. It all came true. On trembling legs, on trembling legs, Amrita approached them. She cried out and staggered back. She almost fainted at the sight of Davy's breathless body, but her brother held her up in time. It can't be. Why are you here? I told you to stay safe. Why did your groom let you go? What does my groom have to do with anything? I was trying to take Davy away from here. Oh, Davy, why didn't you come with me? Amrita turned to Kamal and pressed her head into his chest, trying. He pulled her closer, guiltily caressing her head. Dubai, where have you been all this time? Ram and Rash were helping to lead people out of the temple to a safer place, and we're going to defend it in case something else happened. I asked him. Ooh, ooh, he not having her. But why, sis? Ram lost his own thoughts, ignored Doran's question, and turned to Amrita. Rash, go tell him to go to the Kaligat. His voice sounded lifeless and cold. At the moment, Ram seemed very much like Ratan, calm, detached. There was a distant longing in his eyes. <laughs> Amrita turned around, wiping her tears with the palm of her hand. Why didn't you call him right away? Ram, as if he had not heard the question, only added, Tell him to take Alarasa. Ooh. Amrita flinched and glanced at the governor general. He was listening attentively, but he didn't seem to understand what was being said. Are you sure? Don't ask unnecessary questions. Just do as I said. This man is completely numb now, y'all. He is like, I'm about to bring her back at all costs. I don't give a damn. We'll be inside. Just be careful. I'm not leaving you. It's dangerous. To bar lets you wander around alone again or skin him alive. <laughs> ah, ah. To be quite honest, yes. I love the Rauch Slender, like I said. They're both to blame here, but still. Like, she's the one being pregnant, and this man can do whatever the hell he wants, like hell. Kamal looked sadly at Davy's body. Then he said quietly, I'll accompany my sister and call back. Please take care of her. Kamal, I'm kind of suffering for you, son. He spoke of Davy as if she were alive. He couldn't bear to say out loud that she was gone. Well... What are you planning, Dubai? Would you mind answering at least one question? Mm, I don't think this man is even ready to say anything right now. This man is numb. This is not my plan, but the Dark Mother's plan. I'm only following her. She is who brings death, can also give life. Are her eyes glowing, or is it just me? Ram, I'm coming with you. Ram fixed his eyes on her. He looked at her for a long time, thoughtfully, as if searching for something in Saraswati. She narrowed her eyes and boldly returned his gaze. Finally, the man nodded. He saw what he wanted to see. Determination, maybe? There was something different in Saraswati, something new, alien, and dark. What are you talking about? What do you want to do to her? Suddenly, Christian intervened. Son, I'm dead. What are they supposed to do to me? The Lord was tormented by a multitude of feelings. He was distraught. That was the second time his bride had died. At the same time, his fury for what had happened was softened by his grief for the woman he had known for a short time but still knew. He is such a cutie, Christian declare. She had died right in his arms. Christian could still feel her warmth on his damp fingers and clothes, but he knew he was no longer going to see a single motion flash on that face, a face he used to enjoy watching so much his bride. That's how she had signed herself in that morning's letter. And by nightfall, she was gone. A heavy, agonizing feeling settled inside his chest. He looked at the young woman's body and spoke again, doubt and bitterness in his voice. I still don't know. 
I don't know what you can possibly do to help her right now. You don't need to know. <laughs> Ram. Ram is showing the possessiveness. How remarkable. What kind of medical science can bring a person back to life? Ram glanced at Lord Declare without much interest. What was the point of explaining the greatness of Mahakali's will to a mere mortal? <laughs> Vedic? <laughs> you know what? Uh, none of your business at this point. Do you really think so? Bitch, I'm dead. Oh, a Christian declare. <laughs> Y'all, I'm kind of growing soft for Christian declare. I'm not gonna lie. Like, he just seems to be so honest. Like, his intentions and the love and worry that he has for us just seems so real, so honest. That it actually hurts my heart to see him sad. In hospitals, I know they are experimenting with electrical charges in some cases, but this doesn't seem to be a suitable situation. Look at a wound. Let's just listen to a brain and do what he's asking. Doran snapped. He had no patience left for that nonsensical chatter. <laughs> to be quite honest, y'all. <laughs> Not the new season making me actually feel something for many men. <laughs> like, now it's Ram, Doran, Christian Declare. <laughs> for all these three men. I mean, I've already been playing with um, Ram and Christian, but <laughs> well, damn. Christian wanted to object or insist, but the sight of the lifeless body lying beside him was robbing him of any rational thought. There was only her, her dark blood on the stone pavement and the cold horror for what had happened. Christian declared was ready to believe anything if it could give Devi Sharma even once more chance of, at life. Do what you can. Put your man away from the Kaligat. We're ahead of the... Doran watched the Claire closely and distrustfully. If the Lord had not given his consent, Mr. Bazoo could have hardly denied himself the pleasure of beating it out of him. <laughs> ah, Doran. Ah, like I said, he's a menace. I love him. The adrenaline of the fight was still burning within him, spreading like sizzling flames through his body, and the death of the last direct heir of the Sharma family was only making it worse. He's like, bitch, now with me, I'm done. Taking a deep breath, the executioner pulled himself together and decided to accompany the body. First, Gairas died, and then it was Devi. Whatever Maakali's plan was, if a miracle didn't happen, Doran hoped that the brother and sister soul would be reunited in a better world. I love Doran. Like, that little narration just showed everything there was to know about him. He's like, if they're not gonna be brought back to life let's hope that they at least found peace along with the souls of their mother and father they deserve to be all together at least there doran what am i gonna do with you y'all where the fuck even are we like this is a wasteland like this is making my eyes hurt enough time seemed to have passed since everything had been plunged into darkness they kept walking toward the voices of spellbound Y'all, do not look at the background, trust me, like, you will lose sight of what you're doing. Her very essence seemed to reach out to it as if it was a lifeline. It all felt unreal. She didn't touch any soul the ground with her feet and couldn't see where she was going. She was just walking. Davy thought about... Hmm... <gasps> Doran! Oh, Doran, y'all, I fucking hate it. Like I said, I played. Well, damn... Christian Ramodoran. Y'all, to be quite honest, it just wouldn't make sense if I'm thinking about Doran, but it's really making me. <laughs> I really want to. Mm, like he, my man. I thought about Ram. I mean, this is only fair because in the finale, I wanted to have Christian by my side. <laughs> If you're actually listening to all the nonsense I'm giving from me and you actually arrived at this moment of this video, like, just give me a short message in the comment section. Do you want me to play all three of them and see what happens or not? Like, I'm probably gonna do it anyway, but like, just out, out of cur curiosity, because I have the feeling I'm definitely gonna die if I'm screwing up with Doran, but... <laughs>
<laughs> what happens if uh, Christian the Claire f- finds out that I'm screwing Ram and Doran at the same time? Well, damn. This is, this is y'all, <laughs> the drama. For a moment, Davy felt as if she could smell lavender and yelling, yelling again. And then the image of the man with whom those alluring scents were inextricably linked flashed in her mind. She suddenly thought of what had happened between her and Ram Dubai. From the very beginning, he had guessed that the goddess' will was for me to be someone else's bride. Why didn't he stop? What were all those talks about duty and love for? Why was he reaching for me? I was, as it soon turned out, a very unsuitable candidate for a light fleeting affair. It's so ironic how these thoughts continue to torment me even after death. I mean, like, this is in general, like, the thing that we all would like to have an answer for. Why are we falling in love with someone that we possibly know that there is no future? Because we do, like... We can control our feelings. And if we feel a connection to someone or someone is just capable to make us feel special in a specific way that no one else around us is capable of, then we fall in love with that person and we can't do anything about that. So even if Ram would have known that it was just a fleeting love between the both of you, he can't control his feelings. He fell in love with you, girl. He couldn't do anything about that, even knowing that it could be possible that it's just short-lived. She remembered his lingering kisses, his sensual touches, and the thrill she felt as he held her in his arms. The sparks that flew between them with just a glance, his soft teasing laughter in response to her embarrassment and flushed cheeks. How warmly he supported her when she learned of her fate, how he wanted to share her fears. He was worried sick himself. I could see it. We both agreed on a secret relationship without clear commitment, and I tried to behave accordingly, but he... Did he stay true to himself? I had started to doubt it. If I had married the Lord, after all, would have he taken it lightly? I don't think that he would have, because like I said, y'all, in general, this is like the problem why a fleeting love that actually turns into something real in the future is a very, very dangerous game because I think this is like this for everyone. Like, you all can tell me if you feel differently about that, but if I have someone that I'm in love with, someone that I'm crazy about, that person is mine. I don't share what's mine. I find out that you're screwing someone else You either commit to me or we're breaking up because I'm not sharing you with anyone. Like, I like to know that I'm the only one that gets the pleasure to see you naked. Like, just put out an example, okay? I like to know that I'm the only one that has that privilege with you. Me! I get possessive over that person. And Ram Dubai is actually giving off those signs. Did we see the way he was talking to Christian de Clare? He was like, I have the right because technically we were his wife or his wife-to-be. We were engaged. He's like, I have the right to know what you're doing with my <laughs> dead fiancé now. And he's like, you shut the fuck up. I don't have time for you. This is him marking technically his territory. Like, considering the fact that no one knows about what was going on between us and Ram, no one is actually suspecting anything, and he's just, like, worried about us as a friend or as family member, and he wants to do whatever it takes to get us back to life. But us, as the people that know that he's in love with us, you can actually see the jealousy. He's marking his territory. He's like, she's mine. Because technically, he didn't really say it. I'm talking about Christian de Clare right now. He didn't actually ask that question to Ram. But it actually came across as that question. He was like, who are you to could do anything with my wife or like my fiance? Like, what rights do you have to could just take her with you? 
the answer from him would have to be, she's mine. He just chose to remain silent, but the way he was behaving, he was marking his territory. Are your convictions really so firm and unshakable around Dubai? No, they're not. They're shakable, very much. So many questions I'm asking myself, and all for nothing. In any case, it no longer matters now. All she could think of was her purpose. Why did fate do this to me? I'm not a seer. There are no legends about the Sharma family like the ones told about the Dubais or the Bazoos. All I wanted was to become independent and finally start breathing fully to the good. That actually hurts me because sadly it's people like her that die at the end of the day. In my eyes, there are people of all shades and colors, okay? All shapes and colors. But in my eyes, the most important thing is if you have good intentions at heart. If you're pure-hearted. Because if you're pure-hearted, even though the way you portray it to the outside, considering how I actually feel about the way you're saying things to me, of course. Like if I'm a little sensitive and you're a little bit more impulsive, I have the feeling you're just insulting me or everything. Like you all know, get the drill. It may not come off as a cross to me that you're pure-hearted. But in my eyes, the most important thing is that you have good intentions at heart. Because when you do, that's the best type of person. And like I said, you all do. That's why I'm so happy to have you all as my followers in my comment section. Like, it always makes me feel so emotional to just... No, the second I see a message, I'm like, another pure soul wrote. Another pure soul was brought to my channel. Thank you, Jesus. Like, this all has to do with being pure-hearted. The people that are pure-hearted and have good intentions at heart, sadly, are always the ones that are suffering the most because we feel the most. We all absorb that negativity because we want to do that much good. And sadly, considering the fact that life is mostly negative we absorb the all that negativity and the only thing that we're capable to give out to the world is just a little bit of good and it usually is not enough in order for us to finally get a little bit of positivity and that's frustrating and look what that made her go through at last, her thoughts were becoming sharper. Details and memories of the past were coming back to her, as were her experiences. Until that moment Davy had existed aimlessly in the dark, she knew who she was, but all the defining details about herself seemed to blur into the impenetrable emptiness. It was like she was coming back to life. Along with that feeling, a realization began growing in her mind. Everything I ever wished for seemed so insignificant when faced with death. I wasn't the only one who died in that square. How many others lost their lives? And how many took those lives with their own hands? People exterminated themselves like pretty, like petty, mindless animals. <laughs> Y'all, she's like, I'm dead. I can say whatever the fuck I want. I love her. A voice called out to change fate, dreams, doing good. That's right. It's all worldly vanity. What is defined for you? What is destined for you is far higher, more important, greater than any of your human desires. The old Davy is dead. You are dead. You are dead. And your dreams died with you. Laughter echoed all around her again. Don't cling to your meaningless existence. You are the whole world. And the whole world is you. It's in you. It's in me. Be reborn and rejoice. Y'all, this is like something that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I have my desires, so let me have my fucking desires. If I decide to drop my human emotions, that's my bitch business, okay? That's my bitchy business. If I decide that I want to cling to my humanity, fucking let me. I'm not gonna be forced into giving up my humanity just because you like it so. I already died because of your sorry ass, Kali. What you want now? You want me to give up my humanity for you? No, forget it. We're, we're gonna have a problem. Y'all, can we fight Kali? 
You're much more than the head of a family, more than a bride, more than an ordinary noble woman. You're destined to lead the people, destined to die and be reborn. Only she knows who death can know life. Everything else is dust. Where are we? Ram volunteered to hold Devi's body in the carriage on the way to the Kaligat. He had firmly refused to entrust it to anyone else. What did I say? He's marking his territory. The tiger accompanied her, trotting behind the carriage, not letting go, not wanting to say goodbye to his mistress, <laughs> Amrit. The journey was not too long, and they reached the main temple in Calcutta soon enough. Shall we come in? No, only Mirash and Saraswati should be there. <laughs> Doran is not having it. Very well, then we'll wait nearby. See ya. The men left Ram and Sarah carried Devi's body in the tree. Three of them went inside the temple. Why just them? Ratan met them on the doorstep. He looked at them and his gaze lingered on Devi. I've been waiting for you. Mr. Vaish. Ram, do you have another headache? Just as it all happened. Dubai nodded slowly. Not only that, Maheva, do you know everything? So what happened to her and to you? I'm here to help. Will you do it? Do you know what the dog mother told me? No, but I can guess. Death and the attack were a result of fate running its course. And Makali told you to follow the same path. Isn't that right? Ram only nodded. That was what he had heard in the ritual hall, sitting beside Devi while she was still alive. Do not interfere. That's what she was saying. <laughs> that what was foretold happened. Fate cannot be changed, but everything can be turned to one's advantage. He paused for a long moment before speaking again. She told me not to interfere. To watch from the sidelines and let Devi die. You know everything from the start. This is the natural course of events. The cycle is nearing completion. One can't get in the way. It would have happened sooner or later. Rash appeared in the hall. His breath was a little racked as he rushed there. Am well, I late? Rita told me everything. <laughs> uh, Rash, no, no, we're here uh, being a little dramatic. Saraswati looked cautiously at the head of the doze, and she had heard too many contradictory things that night. The attackers had labeled Sara a traitor, but praised Rash to buy in their speeches. Her mother had her concerns about him, and things ended up being more confusing than before. But he had come to help Devi. Was this not proof of his innocence? Or was he trying to cover his tracks? Or maybe even to interfere with the ritual and finish her off? Someone wanted to make the Dozen families fight with each other, splitting them from within. Once they were going to be divided, they would no longer pose a threat. But maybe Rash had nothing to do with it and had the same suspicions about the bazoos? Sarah was silent. She decided to observe. Come on in. Ram, did Makali tell you anything else? She explained what to do next. Perform the ritual blood to blood, flesh to flesh. Ratan turned his gaze to the side and rubbed his shin. A main blade in the hand of the first Brian, the blood of Makali's daughter. Sarah's eyes gleamed unkindly. Are you planning to kill me? No, a small blood sacrifice. Uh, the way his eyes went up, I remember this bickering when we said that our friendship with Saraswati is more important to us than being in a romantic relationship. I don't think that will be necessary. But if we ask for your blood? Sarah thought for a moment. Why do we need Rash? After all, you are the first prime, Ram. You have a connection with the goddess. That is true, but Rash is still his son. He's also the master of the main blade. He is not devoid of energy, even if it's hardly expressed. I see. I thought I loved it too, even though my Devi is not speaking directly to me. Let's not lose any more time. Like Ma Kali is crazy. Devi continued to follow that call, complete unaware of what was happening to her on Earth at the same time in the Kali. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Shock me, bitches. 
Everyone kneeled down slowly. Ram lowered Davy's head on his lap. Ram, Rita Tantra of the Dark Mother. Raj will make an incision in the palm of Saraswati's hand, which I think will be enough. Saraswati will put her hand on Devi's wound. Raj will put his hand on top of her, and I will help. Let's begin. Taking a deep breath, Ram began slowly reciting the Tantra of the Dark Mother. This whole universe was born by you. This world was created by you. Sarah obediently held out her hand to the elder Dubai, and Raj's hand, a blade of Kaladasa, gleamed, bringer of pain, the Dubai family ritual dagger passed from father to the eldest son. Oh god, I remember this one. It brings so much pain. Rush slashed Saraswati's palm in one swift motion. And it immediately filled with scarlet blood. The young woman bent down in pain and screamed. The greatest night of final dissolution and the terrible night of delusion. The blade was sprinkled with the blood of the one in whose veins Mahakali's blood was believed to flow. Sarah doubled over convulsion, a violent shudder running through her body. The blade had not only cut through her flesh, but her soul as well. Saraswati. Dubai gently caught Sarah by her wrist, preventing her from falling, and threw her uninjured arm around his shoulders to support her. He placed her bloody palm on Davy's wound and covered it with his own. Sarah softly cried out through her tears. Oh my god, what is this? Oh god, but Rash is too... The Rash be looking good. <laughs> so sorry. It hurts. It hurts so bad. Be patient. Ratan gave them a stern, hard stare, silencing them. The wound was burning, sizzling like the brand from a red-hot iron. Saraswati cried, writhing in pain, but kept her hand firmly in Devi's stomach. A soft female whisper sounded out. Blood of my blood, flesh of my flesh. Finally, Ratan put his hand on top of theirs. A light and bright glow began to shine from beneath it, and Ram's eyes lit up at the same time. Oh my god. I'm sorry I'm living for this picture. Look at this. Help your children of a multi-faced one. Grant them the ability to heed your call and do your will. They are in the hall filled with thick dark energy that pierced through their bodies and saturated the space. It was hard to bear. It felt as if a powerful and alien stream for which no one was prepared was affecting their minds. Saraswati and Raj almost lost their senses giving all their strength. But Ratan's presence in Ram's Tantra facilitated the ritual. Breath of my life. Suddenly, a sharp stabbing pain pierced everyone in the room. Everyone who was taking part in the ritual sharply recoiled from Devi, and Ram stopped reciting the tantra. His lips were dry, and his voice a little hoarse. That was difficult. Check on her. Dignity. Saraswati, wiping her tears and sweat from her face with her arm leaned over to Davy and laid her ear against her chest. Well? After a few moments, Sarah suddenly jumped up and exclaimed, She's breathing. Her heart is beating. She's alive. Praise the mother, but the wound is still there. It seems to have healed slightly. I will go away in time. Bound it so it won't be visible. Sarah didn't hesitate to rip a piece of fabric from her sleeve and wrap it around Davy's waist. I can't believe it worked. What are we going to do next? Quiet. The door creaked open. Rash clutched a bloody dagger and Ram stood in front of Davy, fearing another attack. Lord Claire appeared in the hall, accompanied by Kamal and a couple of British soldiers. Sarah immediately hid her hand behind her back. <laughs> Ram <laughs> and Ratan. Ratan and Ram together. Y'all, I wouldn't want them on my back. Kamal. You could have told her guess that this is customary to enter her temple without shoes. I apologize that we didn't think about the shoes. I guess the thought of you dealing with the body here overshadowed all other concerns. Or maybe it was the scream that was heard outside. <laughs> the Claire pressed his lips together, realizing that there were no doctors or other medical help there. Just a few people in an altar. What were they doing? And he, and he could process... Does it work? Everything is fine. 
Fine, she stood. What's fine about that? <laughs> Christian declared. Hey, she, come and see for yourself if you don't believe me. A skeptical Christian approached Davy in brisk steps and took her slender wrist. He stilled. The serious expression on his face was replaced by a surprised one. There was no breath or pulse. Mr. Rai checked after me. Imagine he thinks <laughs> Ram is enjoying this way too much. He's like, bitch, you are just delusional. Like, she's fine. <laughs> Come on! Come on! I was breathing, but I was weak, as was her pulse. And her wound, even though we treated it slightly, still needs more treatment than bandaging. She has lost a lot of blood. And that them actually trying to make this man think that he's delusional. This is so funny to me. Christian, not believing his own eyes, looked at Davy's barely perceptible breathing. Her bloody chest was rising and falling slightly. No, no, I saw, I checked. She was dead. She was. The important thing is that she's alive now. <laughs> Ram is enjoying this way too much. It worked. Kamal didn't trust Ram's words and kneeled down to check on her personally, gently squeezing her wrist. It worked. The governor general held himself together, maintaining an icy calm. However, something in him had changed. It was hard to detect, but it was still noticeable. There was a sparkle in his eyes again. Is it witchcraft? The dark arts? I can't believe what I'm saying. <laughs> Just be happy that we're back, baby. Saraswati narrowed her eyes. What's the difference? What difference does it make as long as she's breathing? It was hard to believe in a miracle. Christian didn't know how to react, but sanity after all he had been through was the last thing he could hold on to at the moment. So she's alive, but just not regaining consciousness. That's right, I think I've heard of something like that. A person goes into a prolonged sleep and appears as if they are dead. Maybe the shock of the pain made it so. Are you well versed in medicine? <laughs> are you well versed in medicine, buddy? You could say that. <laughs> Rob is enjoying this way too much. Like I said, he's using every single opportunity to uh, take out the pipe, you know? To whip him into shape. He's like, C you could say that. Every single time. Every single time. I can't. The Lord shook his head as if he couldn't believe what was happening. He rubbed his temple slowly and intensely, then said thoughtfully, Fine, Miss Sharma's alive, and that's all that matters. But now it's time for further treatment. I have a suggestion on how to help my future bride. Look! Immediately! It's not going to please you. What are you gonna do to me? Gradually, Devi felt the unusual movements of the space around her. Under the vibration of the voice, the darkness seemed to coalesce into strange matter. Like clusters, walking became harder. The environment around her was starting to influence her, pressing in on her form all sides. There was nothing she could compare it to. When I first came here, I couldn't touch anything or feel the cold. Now something has changed. Check it. She clenched her palm into a fist to make sure of her assumptions. That time, Devi caught some kind of sensation, a slight pulse from her own touch. You're getting closer. Okay... <laughs> the dead body. It had been several weeks since the governor general set off to travel to the United Kingdom with Davy and the Indian delegation accompanying her. Sunny, windless, sunny, windless days were followed by stormy ones. In spite of all weather conditions, the ship moved steadily toward the coast of the main British island. Davy still hadn't regained consciousness, despite the best efforts of all the doctors and nurses hired by Lord de Clare. Everyone was afraid that they might miss the moment when she would suddenly get worse and were constantly keeping near her, like that day. Oh, Ram. Ram sat opposite Davy's bed, pulling his chair closer to her. He could spend hours in silence by her bedside. He would stare at her serene sleeping face as if it hit some riddle he was painstakingly trying to solve. Meanwhile, he was thinking about them. He was trying to figure out why he was so attracted to her. It was no longer like anything he might have previously felt for any other woman in his life. It was something intimate, something he was afraid to break, something he cherished, something he treated with care. Does she understand? 
I was the one who said from the very beginning that what was happening between us could not be taken seriously, and we should just enjoy each other's company. She agreed. Now she's being taken away by a future groom all the way to the British countryside, and it's like I'm balancing on the edge, going insane over something I was the one asking her not to worry about. What did I say? Like I said, the Ram is my fucking soulmate, y'all. Dump me! All of you dump me. Ram is my soulmate. What did I say? I did say he's someone like that. He's marking his goddamn territory. He's becoming possessive. He's like actually realizing that he truly developed real love for us. And so he doesn't like to share us with anyone. He's upset about the fact that Christian Declare technically has a right to take us with him. Because technically we are his future wife. Especially now that we're returning to life. He has the right to take us with him because we are his fiance, And he don't like that. He don't like that we belong to someone else. He wants us to himself. A marriage of convenience. He's so upset. Oh, not the sad face. You'll know I can't handle the sad faces. I set the trap myself and I fell into it. Love? But my personal torment is such a small matter now compared to what may await us all in the future, and especially Devi. He cared deeply about what she was going through. He didn't yet have a clear understanding of why all of this was happening. The Brahim was yet to figure it out, but had to do so with her. So he humbly awaited her return. It was just the very beginning of the journey. You're already there. It was getting harder and harder to walk, and the voice was getting closer. It was so loud that it gave Davy a headache. People have forgotten who they are. It's time to remind them. Is it impossible to build the new in the place of the old without burning everything to the ground? Make room, free the people, subjugate their will and lead. You died so that all your human dreams and desires could die with you. See? What did I say? Not happening, ma'am. No. So that you would realize how insignificant and petty people are, how stupid and cowardly they are before the mystery of death, before their destiny. There is no us or them. Death awaits us all if the human race doesn't wake up and listen to me. To us. So will I be reborn? Will I forget myself and become someone or something else? You are who you are, and you remain who you are. You have known death, so everything human is in you is dead. Now you will know life. Your soul will be reborn, filled with my strength, my wisdom, and my darkness. That's how you will lead the people. You'll destroy everything to build a new order upon the ashes. David could already feel her body starting to break, the pressure of the space around her becoming unbearable. You're ready. Go, child. You shall not burn in the flames of samsara until you fulfill my will and your destiny. She said you were here just to worry about me. England, county of Hertfordshire. Okay. A sharp inhale made her lungs expand painfully. Davy opened her eyes, but the bright daylight made her close them again. What happened? Everything seemed like a bad dream to her. Davy crawled under the blanket and put her hand on her stomach where she'd been wounded. She could feel a bandage through the thin fabric of her nightgown. So all that actually happened. I was really hurt and... In the corner of her eyes, she sensed someone's presence. Davy wasn't alone. Torambazu was lurking in the corner, watching her. He happy! He was sitting in an armchair with his legs crossed, some books in his hands. His eyes narrowed as they did when he smiled, and thin lines appeared in the other corners. No, y'all, I'm I'm shy. <laughs> uh, y'all, Torambazu is making me shy. Davy slowly lifted herself up in bed, pulling the blanket to cover herself up. Doran spoke in a soft but deep voice. Oh, come, I'm the one who has the honor of capturing this moment. Good afternoon, Miss Sharma. Welcome back. Period. Y'all would have liked if it would have been Ram or Christian Declare at our bedside. No, I wouldn't have. Am I still living my best life knowing that it was Doran Bazu seeing us? Yes, I am. Like, Doran has something, y'all. He has something, and I hate myself for loving it so much. Y'all, I'm gonna play both, all three of them. 
<laughs> I'm gonna play all three of them. I'm gonna be hated. I'm gonna be cancelled. And I'm not talking about my comment section or my community. I'm talking about the game. Like, this game is gonna cancel my ass. And I'm gonna be to blame for this. But what can I do? It's me. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video with me. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best. And I will see you in another video. Bye.